Did Irma rain on your Medicare parade? Hello, I am Kevin Canals with InsureMeKevin.com, an independent health insurance agent who helps people enroll in different Medicare Advantage and supplement plans and Part D drug plans. And several of my clients have called me and said, Kev, I'm paying like way more for my Part D and Part B because I got hit with some sort of Irma. And Irma is not a hurricane, but it can feel like one. Irma stands for Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount. And it is applied to individuals who move into Medicare and were high wage earners had a high adjusted gross income at least the previous year and it can be quite a bit more money with this irma adjustment added on and there's a couple different federal agencies involved and i, I kind of wanted to go through and take out possibly some of the mystery of how all of this goes on because it, it kind of moves back and forth so let's look at Medicare and Social Security, the two big federal agencies that are involved. Now, Medicare sets the Part B premium that people pay when they first go into Original Medicare, and they determine the Part D base cost potentially for any IRMA-related adjustment. And they can also bill for the Part B premium and the Part B and Part D IRMA extra add-on cost, okay? Now, there's Social Security, because Social Security is the gatekeeper for Medicare eligibility and enrollment. Um, Social Security knows your work history and if you have enough work credits to get Part A at zero premium, but they also know your income and if you should be getting any income-related monthly adjustment amount. And they use data from the IRS. That's the third government agency. And when they get the data back, that's when that triggers the IRMA. Now, Social Security can waive the, that IRMA additional amount, and they can also deduct the Part B and the IRMA amounts from your Social Security retirement check if you're receiving Social Security retirement benefits. So, Part B. B has a base plan that is widely advertised, and for 2024, it's $174.70 per month. And that's what, you know, most people pay. But that actually represents only about 25% of the insurance cost of the Part B outpatient services, okay? So Part B is subsidized by the federal government. Now, if your income is above a certain threshold, um, $103,000 for individuals, or if you're a married couple, over $206,000, that starts to trigger the increasing IRMA up adjustment amounts onto that Part B. So, for a individual that is making between one hundred and three dollars and $129,000 on the last filed, IRS tax return, they will be paying an additional $69.90 per month. That represents 35% of the cost of Part B. And then as you can see from this graphic, the IRMAs keep going up until it reaches about 85% of the total cost. So even though you're getting hit with an IRMA, you're still not paying a full 100% of the actuarial value of that Part B plan. When it comes to income, it is the modified adjusted gross income on your last filed tax return. So that is the adjusted gross income, I believe line 11 from the front page of the 1040, plus tax exempt interest. And that's what Social Security is using to determine if this IRMA income related monthly adjustment amount is triggered. Part D is a little bit different because part, the Part D drug plans don't have a set price. The Part D drug plans are 
um, offered by individual companies and you know the premiums can be all over the place there is a kind of a national average and I'm assuming that's maybe what Medicare is using is the the national average of the the Part D drug plans based on their Medicare Part D standard structure regardless they come up with a price and then they have an IRMA for the Part D. Now, Part B and Part D for drug are both Medicare coverage that is subsidized by the federal government. Therefore, that's why they have this income-related monthly adjustment because as the theory goes, if you earn more, you should probably shoulder more of the costs and not have the federal government subsidize the insurance as much. So an individual making between $103,000 and $129,000 will have $12.90 for this income-related monthly adjustment amount. And that's over and above any premium you may pay for the Part D drug plan. <laughs> that may be more than the premium for your Part B Part D drug plan. So that's all, it's all getting confusing, Kevin. Okay, so let's kind of look at what is subject to the IRMA. So Part A of original Medicare, your hospital coverage, you know, that is not subject to the IRMA. So generally most people get Part A zero cost because they've worked for 10 years, 40 quarters and paid the Medicare taxes. So there's no IRMA on that. Part B is subject to that income related monthly adjustment as is the Part D drug coverage. Medicare supplements are not subject to any IRMA. That you, if you enroll in a supplement, that's with a private company and it's not being subsidized by the federal government and there is no IRMA on there. The Medicare Advantage plans, the, any premium that you may pay, that is not subject to the IRMA. However, because you must be enrolled in Part B of Original Medicare to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, you could be subject to the Part B IRMA and because Medicare Advantage plans include prescription drug coverage most often, you could be subject to the IRMA for the Part D within the Medicare Advantage plan. So your Medicare Advantage plan may be $0 a monthly cost, but you get a bill um, for that IRMA either through Medicare or it's a deducted from your Social Security retirement check. Now, if you are eligible for Medicaid, Medi-Cal in, Cal in California, the IRMA is waived. Then some people will, how could I be subject to an IRMA if I am eligible for uh, Medi-Cal? Well, the way Social Security is looking at your income for 2024, they're using 2022 tax return. Because when you came into Medicare for 2024, it was 2023, you hadn't filed your tax return. So there's this lag time. And who knows, maybe you left a job or you sold a bunch of property and in 2022, your income had spiked. But you know, a year later, your income is way down and maybe you are eligible for Medi-Cal and then that IRMA is waived. Now, if you are not taking Social Security retirement benefits, getting a deposit directly into your checking account, you will receive a bill from Medicare, um, usually monthly, sometimes quarterly, and it must be paid. If you do not pay the IRMA, you will be terminated from Part B, and you don't want that. You can get the IRMA waived, but you have to file a form with Social Security. And the big things that they're looking at that they will seriously look at removing the IRMA is if uh, marriage, you entered into a legal marriage, you know, during the year, um, divorce or an annulment, death of a spouse, loss of income producing property, loss of pension income, or employer settlement payment. Things that would dramatically change your income 
in the middle of the year or the beginning of the year and it drops precipitously. And so you're, you no longer are tied to that higher income from the previous federal tax return. And so there's a form that you can fill out and send to Social Security. You will need to provide documentation of the life-changing event, and that's the Medicare income-related monthly adjustment amount life-changing event form. So what does this all look like? So let's look, go through an example. Married couple, Pat age 67 and Dawn age 64. Pat retired and is activating the Part B of Medicare, but Pat is not taking Social Security retirement benefits. He's going to wait until he's 70 years old. Now, Pat and Don's modified adjusted gross income for the year that Social Security looked at was $350,000. So Pat is subject to the IRMA for his Part B and Part D enrollments that he has. So if we look at that Medicare bill, it would look something like this. Zero cost for Part A because Pat worked for more than 10 years. The Part B base premium is $174.70, but because Pat is in that higher income range, there will be an IRMA of $279.50 and there will be an additional IRMA amount for the Part D coverage of $53.80. So his monthly Medicare invoice will be $508. Some people are taking Social Security retirement benefits. And if all of the Part B and the IRMAs are greater than the Social Security retirement check, then you, you'll you get an, an, an additional bill. Um, now, Don, the other half of Pat and Don, uh, will be subject to the IRMA as well if the income, that modified adjusted gross income, is still high when Don retires and triggers his Medicare enrollment. Um, now, the, those income thresholds go up every year, as do the IRMA amounts. So it's possible that as Pat and Don, their income goes down and the thresholds go up, that they won't be subject to the IRMA. And those folks who had a one-time spike on their federal income tax return, because maybe they sold some property, had a large capital gain, that will also fade out as the next filed tax return will show a much lower modified adjusted gross income and they get back to normal. So hopefully that kind of explains this whole IRMA thing a little bit. It's kind of confusing because there's so many different federal agencies involved and I'm not a complete expert on all of it. But if you do have any questions or comments, you may leave those down below. I will do my best to answer them. Otherwise, for insuremekevin.com, I'm Kevin Knauss.